um, I have also not spoken about this uh, very openly uh, in various places. So I think I have a onus of explaining why I resigned. Just like people would imagine that their life has to be personal, uh, I always imagined my life to be public. I had always designed my life in such a way that uh, it needs to be public. I simply couldn't believe my eyes of what was happening. I couldn't simply sleep for nights. Uh, the only benefactor of this whole event, all whole nonsense, was the political class of how people can be managed or people can be uh, brainwashed to do things. Uh, be it Muslims or Hindus, it didn't matter to me. For me, it was all poor, innocent people. This cannot happen in my country and uh, that too in this 21st century. There should be something fundamentally wrong in what we are and what, what we have become. Populism is one part of that ism. There was a very, 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 very strong match on what was happening and what had happened in history. We are moving towards a catastrophe and we are driving the whole country towards that catastrophe. And who is driving it? It is ourselves. This is not good for us. This is not good for our families. That the uh, government has now reached a stage after five years, six years, now reached a stage where it is ready to experiment on things which had already happened in history. This, I think, is the second independence movement. Hello and welcome back. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, the response that you showed to my last video. The last video which I had posted was uh, with deep agony about the hijab issue. Anybody who loves this country would not want to witness the scenes that uh, is being played out in the country right now. But nevertheless, it is high time that we as Indians understand what India is and try to uphold the values of India and try to understand why pluralism is the crux on the soul of India and why we should protect this. There is no point in uh, not protecting this and saying that India will survive. In the last video, I also had mentioned that uh, you know all of us will have to do something, something or the other. Uh, whatever we are capable from our side, whether we can, whether if we can paint, we should paint. If we can write, we should write. If we can talk to some people, we should talk. But we have to uphold and try to understand and propagate the idea of India. I would be failing my duty if I don't uh, continuously talk and extend this video series into something further and I having worked in the government for so long and uh, having seen things from different perspectives it will be justified for me to share these perspectives with you and uh, try and do my bit in protecting this idea of India. The first thing anybody would ask me after my name is the question why did you resign? Why did you resign from a service that is so coveted and uh, why what made you exactly do that? Often people would assume that I resigned because of uh, tremendous pressure from uh, politicians, communal mafia and the sand mafia and things like that. And uh, sometimes uh, even after explaining why I resigned, uh, many times people would still try and ask me that like, what exactly made you resign? So I think that issue has to be dealt with first. I have to explain uh, very clearly uh, why did I resign? Because that has a lot of connection with what we are talking about in this uh, video. I have also not spoken about this uh, very openly uh, in various places. So I think I have a onus of explaining why I resigned and uh, what is the exact situation under which I resigned from the IAS. Well, we are two brothers, siblings, uh, born to parents who are first generation, educated. Uh, our families uh, were not very privileged economically, socially, caste-wise. Uh, the first person to push me into public life was my father. Uh, I remember him uh, telling very clearly that I have two sons. One is for the home and the other is for the country. And I very candidly assume that I am the one for the country. Another word that I remember very fondly from my father is that one should never forget the path that one has traversed. 
and this is something which still haunts me today we have traveled as a family have traveled a very rough path of course we never got to see that roughness because my parents protected us but i do believe and i have seen it for myself that that path which people travel is not that smooth so i have to go back in this path and try to bring people who are struggling uh, so that i can fulfill my life and live the son that my father wanted me to live as hence from a very young age i started thinking that my life has to be public just like people would imagine that their life has to be personal uh, i always imagine my life to be public i had always designed my life in such a way that uh, it needs to be public so this is where my interest and my love for my people for my country for my fellow humans started and uh, that is what culminated into my uh, further things i had a very protected childhood and hence i was very desperate to join a college without the influence of my parents or without their support uh, it was college where i got exposed to life uh, where i started seeing my friends from different uh, categories of uh, socio economic categories and that actually exposed me to develop a keen interest in poverty privileges and other things college is also the place where i met my uh, spouse sujatha who has been a constant partner in whatever i've been uh, doing uh, since then the more i started seeing the lives of the poor i started getting a keen interest uh, on their knowledge their ability to thrive their ability to see things from different perspectives and that really became my world and that is where i really wanted to spend the rest of my career in understanding poverty and in trying to make lives better for people who are and otherwise very oppressed and underprivileged post college i did a small software stint uh, just like any other person during the 2k so i quickly realized that that is not my game and uh, i had to uh, leave it in between i then joined uh, as a lecturer in a college a semi rural college stayed with the students trying to understand whether i can uh, work well in the social realm and that proved to be a very good experience for me and that is when i realized that i am good at that and i i'm enjoying this process of working with people uh, to test myself further i joined an ngo and worked in the area of bonded labor and that gave me absolute satisfaction in trying to understand what i was interested in somebody once told me government is the biggest ngo so why didn't why don't you try it and that is when i realize that i have to uh, sort of become or try and write the civil service examination and that is when my journey towards civil service examination started another important uh, period that influenced my perspective is uh, is 2002 during my preparation anyone who was little bit aware of uh, the contemporary events at that time would realize that this was when the godra riots happened and uh, even though india is known for many such riots uh, this is the riot which was happening during my period in the 21st century and uh, i simply couldn't believe my eyes of what was happening i couldn't simply sleep for nights uh, realizing or thinking about people and neighbors and friends going for each other's families killing each other harming each other and i could couldn't simply fathom how could that happen i also understood that uh, the only benefactor of this whole event all whole nonsense was the political class uh, there was nothing which anybody gained out of it Uh, neither the majority community nor the minority community except losing near and dear ones uh, so this is something which i thought uh, was uh, or this event is something which really uh, made me uh, see things another important ev- uh, uh, aspect of this event is that even the proposal that there was a little bit of connivance from the government made me completely uh reorient my thought process i couldn't understand how this could happen the whole process that is when i started seeing things 
that is when i started seeing the politics of all this the politics of criminalization the politics of populism the politics of fascism and how this authoritarian uh, structure or a framework uh, is de deposed on a country so i started a specific interest in this area of how people can be managed or people can be uh, brainwashed to do things and that is when i started uh, taking psychology as a subject uh, i really wanted to understand mass psychology on how things work nothing can be more sinister than allowing people innocent people uh, to go behind each other to go for each other's families and to kill each other uh, be it muslims or hindus it didn't matter to me for me it was all poor innocent people and uh, i and thought that this cannot happen in my country and uh, that too in this 21st century if this is happening at this time there should be something fundamentally wrong in what we are on what what we have become and where we have traveled to so that is that has become my quest uh, in the coming days from that point onwards human sufferings is something which had shaped my uh, world vision i always uh, try to empathize or uh, be with the people who are uh, underdogs who have been suffering in the society or who have subjected to uh, oppression and that had also uh, sort of developed my perspective on uh, my my preparation to civil service was also heavily influenced by that perspective come 2009 i had cleared the civil service uh, securing 9th rank all india and uh, from there i had spent very good time in the uh, lbsna academy with my friends and colleagues uh, it was a wonderful i have wonderful memories like everybody else uh, after finishing training i was allotted to the karnataka cadre and i started working in the karnataka cadre in the capacity of assistant commissioner in bellary Uh, i had after that i had um, gradually got promoted spent two years in shimoga as ceo zilla panchayat and then i was dc for or district commission commis deputy commissioner or district magistrate for chitradurga to con for the election period after which i also became the deputy commissioner of raichur uh, in 2014 so 2014 is another year uh, which is very very important in my <laughs> timeline because that is the year uh, when the politics which uh, was the epicenter in godra uh, gradually moved forward in the national realm and then uh, took control of the uh, central government now uh, what is this politics all about this is the politics which took control of the country in 2014 uh, is a mix of many isms that we would be reading in uh, political science or anybody who's interested in uh, political psychology would be easily spotting that populism is one part of that ism uh, populism is a kind of politics uh, in which uh, the name of the people is is used to uh, basically fur further a dictator dictatorial push uh, you separate uh, or you blame whatever has been happening on the elites and then you say that the the real people are the people who matter and then finally you say that uh, the real people's voice matters and i am the voice of the real people this is a combination and then finally it is it is a uh, a a structure by which you can a politics by which you can grab power in democracy and it has been used widely used in the world for a long time anyway that is for a different video on how what is populism and how it operates uh so it was in 2014 that this politics which was in the center of godra uh took over the country uh that rang a bell in me but uh even though it rang a bell i thought india was uh, this hugely plural country unlike any homogeneous state and it is very difficult to control uh, india as such so i was very confident super confident that uh, this will not work in india my interest in uh, the uh, politics of populism and uh, authoritarianism totalitarianism uh, doubled at that time and i started uh, comparing whatever was the set framework with what was happening in india 
and uh, believe me there was a very 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 strong match on what was happening and what had happened in history and and that led me to believe and understand where we are going towards and uh, on the way i also kind of understood how people will be fool to believe uh, what they believe in in 2017 when i was posted as deputy commissioner dakshin kannada dakshin kannada being a slightly communally charged place i was given a very clear brief briefing by the then government uh, that i had to uh, put myself very strongly and control the communal overtones and uh, the moment i entered dakshin kannada that was my only goal try to understand how communalization works in a particular place and what it has done to dakshin kannada and uh, some day i'll be posting a video on what has happened to dakshin kannada and how things have changed uh, since the communalization started in 2019 the general elections came and i was the election officer of dakshin kannada and i really wanted to see that whether the same kind of politics can uh, further it claw its claws into the country by this time significant uh, damage has already been done to the social fabric of this country and in 2019 i expected that uh, may not be the case but on the contrary uh, the same politics won over again uh, probably with a little bit of uh, more vote percentage uh, that made me feel uh, in a certain way you know uh, i knew where we are heading to and uh, i also understood there was a complete silence from the people as such yes there were groups of elites and intellectuals talking about this but there was no uh, major uh, Uh, response uh, from the people as such so i really felt like a fisherman in the sea who could uh, see the tsunami coming you know in the sea uh, from a long distance and i have a family to protect on the on the on the coast uh, i had only one option that i had to come to the coast and save not only my family the families that that i could save so that was the feeling that i was traveling at that point of time that we are moving towards a catastrophe and we are driving the whole country towards that catastrophe and who is driving it it is ourselves and we not realizing because of history and whatever has happened we have not not realized what we are doing and because of that we are moving ourselves and our families towards this catastrophe so i really thought that i had to now take up a call of coming out and fighting this coming out and explaining to people that we are moving towards a catastrophe and coming out and doing my bit in what i had to do another thought which was completely on my head was uh, the nuremberg trials when uh, the bureaucrats of the nazi germany was tried and asked how you had the will and the mind to perpetuate this when this was happening the only answer that every bureaucrat gave there was no we were simply following orders we didn't do anything else and that was their defense uh, in nuremberg i didn't want myself to be in a position where the government itself was propagating this and uh, me being uh, a civil servant uh, bound by the conduct rules and other things to stay in that position and do what the government is asking me to do i had to stay on the right side of history i didn't have an option i had to come out and fight with even the smallest of people who were fighting with i had to join hands and do something about it uh, that is the mindset in which i was there and that is that was becoming clearer and clearer as things were proceeding what exactly happened um, what triggered my resignation uh, in fact uh, this might be surprising to many people the other question i am regularly asked is that how did your family take it how did your wife take it how did your parents take it for both these questions there is this answer so i would uh, you know uh, narrate it was a one fine evening that my spouse was there in the house and i i finished my uh, duty in the evening and we had come over and where after dinner we were watching the news and this is exactly when article 370 was abrogated uh, and uh, the whole kashmir was made into a prison 
So uh, during uh, in civil service, we have uh, preventive procedures in which we would incarcerate people in expectation of a crime. Uh, we would uh, incarcerate them for 24 hours, 48 hours, depends on uh, what request is made by the what uh, information that the magistrate gets about this person. Even during that time, even for 24 hours to one person, I would not do it that simply or I would lose my sleep over curtailing his rights because we are a country which thrives on rights. Of course, there's a, now a lot of talk about duties and things. Duties cannot come when rights cannot be delivered. Rights have to be delivered by the state first of all, protected and that is when duties start. At the end of the uh, ensuring of rights is where duties start. So imagine an entire state being incarcerated for so many months that we did. That was a alarm bell for me that if a country, if a government could do this, if a government could put an entire state into house arrest, that government can do anything. And just go back into history and see when these things have happened. We have umpteen number of examples right from Nazi Germany to other totalitarian regimes where the government was able to do this. So that was something which, which told me that the uh, government has now reached a stage after five years, six years, it has now reached a stage where it is ready to experiment on things which had already happened in history. So that is when uh, my wife was next to me. Uh, in fact, she pushed me. In fact, she started asking me, look, Sashi, look at you, you know, you were this rebel in college trying to work with the poor and whatnot. Now you have lost all that. And she was absolutely uh, destroyed that I was now in a big bungalow managing a district and not bothered about how the country is going. In fact, that, that thought that my wife started thinking about this, like this about me, uh, shattered me to an extent that I told her immediately that, yes, now I have to stop and I have to go into this fight. And uh, that is when I uh, decided that uh, I would do that. Uh, regarding my parents and my brother, when I broke the news to them that I'm going to resign, uh, not even a word of uh, non-acceptance. They were completely accepting this and they completely understood why I am doing this. They also completely understood what consequences will be there for me if I do this openly with this government. But they were completely understanding that I had to do this and uh, this is how my uh, path will proceed in the future. So there was not a single word of non-acceptance from my family uh, that I have to rethink this or maybe choose a better time. Neither from my parents, neither from my um, brothers, neither from my wife. In fact, the day I resigned, I reached my wife. Uh, she was ready with a cake and a big party uh, to celebrate that I am going to, you know, sort of uh, enter this fight along with the people who are fighting uh, in, on the ground. On the day of my resignation, uh, I was, I didn't want to make a big uh, issue out of it. I really wanted to conserve my energy so that I can fight in the long run. I really didn't want uh, to go to press and say many things. I had written a letter uh, on the day of my resignation. That is after my, the discussion with my wife on the sixth day after that I had given my resignation. And I wanted to resign from the post of the deputy commissioner because it was a protest resignation. Uh, it was against the policies of the government. It was very clearly against uh, the way in which the government is running this country. And um, I had written a letter, a resignation letter, uh, which I had drafted in only 10 minutes uh, on my resignation day. And I think that spoke uh, what I needed, needed to tell. And that I had to get and start joining uh, hands with people who are on the ground uh, who are fighting. So uh, on that day, uh, I just took one day for me to pack my things. I didn't have much. I had an old bullet and I kicked my bullet from Mangalore and drove all the way to Bangalore where my wife was already uh, waiting.
uh, life after resignation has been great uh, in fact i would say that i would have been extremely unhappy if i would not have taken the call uh, i have traveled to places that i would not have otherwise traveled i have met some of the best human beings uh, in my entire life in these last 2 years i have joined hands with students i have joined hands with uh, many uh, very very brave people in the society uh, in their fight and i have been doing my bit in whatever i can i have also joined hands with many civil society movements the political uh, forum of the congress party i have uh, joined hands with uh, many uh, ground workers have also been a part of greatest people's movement which has happened in this country i regard this nrcca as a very big people's movement i would rather talk about it in some other video it requires a little bit of time uh, so life after resignation has been exactly going in the direction that uh, i wished it will be going yeah i did regret uh, leaving service uh, at one point <laughs> only one point that is when covid struck uh, when covid struck i was absolutely uh, shattered that i was not on the ground when i saw my colleagues on the ground working day and night risking their lives and standing and leading uh, i really did want to be want to be there uh, in the field other than that uh, i never had any problem with leaving the service because the service has a lot of good people because i have worked with all of them moved with all of them i know uh, there are huge number of uh, capable and very 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 um, extremely talented ias officers ips officers uh, the young of the the youth of this country is still uh, a very vibrant lot which understand what india is all about so i don't have any uh, uh, worries that i left service early or anything like that uh, to people who would say that you know uh, you did a big sacrifice or anything i really don't think it is a sacrifice it is a choice that i have taken yes and there was a fight and there is a requirement for people like me to get into that fight and uh, it is a it is a thing that we had to do i always keep giving this explain example of this freedom movement where people uh, left their families left their uh, property left their jobs the first prime minister of this country spent 11 years in prison you know that's the kind of sacrifice which you know which our forefathers have done so that we would travel Uh, or we would ride this wave of freedom and liberty for the last 70 years i think now it is our turn now it is our turn to create that way for our next generation and whether we will be up to it is a is a is a, is a, is a question we have to ask ourselves and um, what are we going to deliver to our next generation if we don't give this uh, this spear of happiness this 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 brotherhood and uh, this uh, goodness uh that's something which is really very very important so to people who ask you know why you know you should you did this big sacrifice or things like that i keep telling them no this is not a sacrifice at all compared to what had happened in, in our history this is absolutely nothing and uh, and why not this i think is the second independence movement